We begin in Syria, where a U.S. journalist has been freed after spending nearly two years in captivity. Now, Al Jazeera has obtained pictures of Peter, Peter Theo Curtis. He was captured in 2012. He was seized by the Al Nusra Front. Now, it's been playing a significant role in the fight against the Syrian government, and it's also seen as Al Qaeda's representatives in Syria. Well, Curtis was last known to be in Antakya in Turkey before he disappeared. And from there, he planned to enter Syria. Now, he's been handed to a UN representative in a deal mediated by the government of Qatar. Patty Kalhane has more. Hello, my name is Peter Theo Curtis. I'm a journalist. In this video obtained by Al Jazeera, Boston-based journalist Peter Theo Curtis appears to be reading from a script as he sends these reassurances. I have everything I need. Everything has been perfect. Food clothing, even friends now. Thank you very his much. His family is crediting Qatar for his release, saying they don't know the exact terms of the negotiations, but his mother Nancy said in a statement, quote, we were repeatedly told by representatives of the Qatari government that they were mediating for Theo's release on a humanitarian basis without the payment of money. Curtis was taken captive almost two years ago, the U.S. believes by Al Nusra Front, who uh, released him to the custody uh, of the U.N. in the Golan Heights uh, on Sunday after almost uh, two years in captivity. Russia. Curtis was a new name. He changed it after publishing the book Undercover Muslim, A Journey into Yemen. It details how he faked his conversion to Islam in order to get access to Salafist institutions. His release came on the same day that a funeral mass was held for James Foley, the American journalist beheaded in Syria by the Islamic State group. The Obama administration says it is working to find and free the other Americans that are being held hostage while it fights the Islamic State group from the air. A rare moment of success celebrated for one American who is finally headed home. Patty Colhane, Al Jazeera, Washington. Well, Qatar's foreign ministry has issued this statement about its role in the release of Peter Theo Curtis. It says Qatar exerted relentless efforts to release the American journalist out of Qatar's belief in the principles of humanity and its keenness on the lives of individuals and their right to freedom and dignity. Now, Tom Ackerman joins me from Washington, D.C. Tom, tell me what's the reaction there so far on his release? Well, first of all, uh, a statement from uh, President uh, Obama, who's still on holiday in Massachusetts, said that the president shares in the relief and joy in the release of Mr. Curtis, but his thoughts and prayers remain with the other hostages who remain in custody, and it's estimated that there are at least 20 other foreigners, Westerners, who are held captive somewhere in Syria by various organizations. Uh, J Secretary of State John Kerry also issued a statement of his own saying that, uh, that more than 20 countries had been enlisted, or at least the U.S. government had asked for uh, help from more than two dozen countries uh, asking for what he called uh, tools, influence, or leverage uh, in the release of uh, Curtis. Uh, and uh, apparently that was that proved successful in this case. Uh, however, uh, there are also indications, of course, that uh, they, they they do not know the fate of another American journalist, Stephen Sotloff, uh, who uh, is also being held by either the IS or uh, the uh, Al Nusra Front in Syria. And Tom, this of course comes uh, soon after another journalist was killed in Syria, an American journalist, Foley. Uh, tell us what's being said there today about that. His, uh, he, he was remembered in a Roman Catholic Church Remembrance Mass in his hometown in Rochester, North uh, New Hampshire. Uh, the uh, priest who, uh, the bishop who presided over the ceremony said that even after Foley was captured for the first time in Libya back in 2011, he quote, went back again that we might open our eyes, that we might indeed know how precious is the gift and uh, asked for uh, people to pray, pray for another captive, as we said, Stephen Sotloff and all the captives. And uh, there was a vigil held uh, on Saturday night also in Rochester, New Hampshire, uh, Fo Foley's hometown, in which about 200 people gathered to show support for the Foley family. Tom Ackerman for us in Washington. Thank you.